Hi folks, back again with uh, the next part of our work on data frames in chapter seven of our textbook. And so you're starting at uh, about slide 30, I believe, of uh, the chapter seven part two slides. We'll be going back quite in, uh, back and forth quite a bit with our studio here. Uh, hope that goes smoothly enough. But remember that when you're working with these slides, you've got them open, but you've also got our studio open and you're gonna be wanting to go back and forth a good bit yourself. Hope this gives you an idea of how it's going. So subsetting with data frames works uh, just like subsetting with matrices, really. So for example, uh, suppose that you wanted uh, to get all of the rows of M111 survey, but only the columns that were named height and ideal height then uh, you take M111 survey and then you use your square brackets as your selection and you have a comma nothing before the comma means i want all the rows but then after the comma we've got a character vector of length two that gives the names of the two columns that we want let's see how this looks in our studio so what I've got here is I've done library on BCSCR so that I have access to M111 survey. Uh, I've cleared out my global environment over here so it's easy to see what's going to happen. And uh, I run that command and the name DF is bound to a data frame with seven, the, all the 71 rows, but as you can see, only those two columns, height and ideal height. If we want to get a look at uh, DF, we can see it in view. And sure enough, it's just those two columns. Now, suppose that you ask for just one column, what would happen to you? Say you want, uh, in Math 111 survey, all of the rows, nothing before that comma, but just the height column. Let's give that a try, running line six here in my R script. Well, the result is no longer a data frame. You can tell because it doesn't say 71 observations of one variable, it just says numerical one to 71. It's a simple numerical vector. So sometimes that's what you want, uh, but often that's not what you want. You want a data frame with just the one column. In that case, it works just like with vectors, there is a parameter drop and you can take it from its default value of true to uh, false by throwing it into your subsetting operation. Let's try line eight here. And now you see in the global environment, DF has been bound to sure enough, a data frame with just the one column height. You can select rows, of course. You just have to specify things before the comma. So here we have M111 survey, and we're going to select the rows 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And uh, just to keep uh, things manageable, should we ever print it out, uh, how about just those two columns? So, if I wanted all the rows printed out, run line 10, and uh, that gets to be quite uh, a lot of stuff because there's 12 columns. Whereas if I just ask for line 12, then we have those six rows and the two columns. Now here's something interesting. Uh, you can select rows at random from a data frame. From a data frame, this is quite useful if uh, your data frame is quite large, and you want to just pick out some of it to look at. So we're going to bind the name in to the number of rows in the data frame. In row, that's a nice function to remember. It tells you how many rows a data frame is going to have. Um, 
And then DF shall be Math 111 survey, but we're going to do some selection. The rows we want are the result of this call to the function sample, when we're sampling for the, from the rows 1 to 71, just 6, please, replaces false, so we'll get six different random rows, six numbers. And then after the column, we have nothing because we want to get all the columns. Let's see how that might look. So on line 14, I bind n to the number of rows. So we get 71, the integer over here in the global environment. And now I'll bind df to the result of selecting from M111 survey a random six rows. So sure enough, df is now six observations on 12 variables. So if I ask to have a look at it in view, that's six random rows. Your results will differ. You can subset with Boolean expressions. This is probably the most important type of subsetting you'll ever do with the data frame. So here I am binding the name df to the result of taking M111 survey and subsetting where I only want the rows where the fastest variable inside of the M111 survey turns out to be bigger than or equal to 150 miles an hour. After the comma, there's nothing, so I'm going to get all the columns. Let's see how that works out. Running line 19, there were only two people who drove faster than or faster than 150 and so those are the only two rows that are now left in DF. Let's take a look at these people. There they are. And sure enough, if we look at their fastest, it's 160 and 190. What more about them? Uh, they were both males. Um, one of them has a good GPA, the other not so much. Well, there we are. Um, like to look a little bit deeper into that command why it's working the way it is, it's all turning on the logical vector produced before the comma. M111 survey dollar sign fastest bigger than or equal to 150. Let's think about that, the pieces of it. I'm going to just select now M111 survey dollar sign fastest and run just that little selection. That's all the fastest speeds. There are all kinds of different numbers. But now I'm going to run the Boolean expression, M111 survey dollar sign fastest bigger than or equal to 150. And now we get a logical vector of trues and falses. There's only two trues in that whole vector, one here and another one here. Those are the people that drove faster. So the way that the subsetting is working is that wherever there's a true in this vector, R is going to allow that row to get into the selection. So subsetting with Boolean uh, expressions is great, but it often involves using uh, a vector inside the data frame itself. So looking back at that command, we had to mention the data frame first, and then we start subsetting from it. We've got to mention it again in order to get down to that fastest variable inside it. So you can end up typing the name of your uh, data set a lot of times often with the dollar sign to get down to a variable inside. That can get a little bit old. So there's another command in R called subset that will let you do this a little more conveniently. Subset is a function with three parameters. The first parameter is named x. It's the data frame that you're going to do the picking from. The second parameter is named subset, and that's the Boolean expression that tells you what rows you want. 
And the third parameter, select, is what columns you want. If you don't specify a select, it'll give you all the columns. How might this work? Well, you can get the same results as we just did by saying we want a subset where X is M111 survey. The subset Boolean expression shall be fastest bigger than or equal to 150. And the select is whatever columns we want. We just stick them together into a character vector. So the convenience of this is that we don't have to keep typing M111 survey in front of all of our variables inside it because M111 survey is the X argument. R knows that these other names ought to be looked for inside of the data frame when it's running the expression. Now, most people do not name the first two arguments to subset. So the typical way you'll see the command is subset M111 survey that goes into the X, fastest bigger than or equal to 150 goes into the subset parameter. Uh, they'll often uh, name the third parameter though, just because they, just because it's kind of convention. So your logical subsetting for data frames can become quite complex, just as com complex as any logical subsetting for uh, regular vectors that you did way back in chapter two. So let's take a look at this one. DF shall now be bound to the result of subset on Math 111 survey, where the rows we want are the rows where seat is equal equal to three back, the person prefers to sit in the back, and height is less than 72, and the sex of the person is equal equal to female. And just for convenience in printing it out here on the slides, I'm only gonna pick those three columns. Subsets are uh, gonna be your go-to way to pick uh, rows out of a data frame. Ordering data frames. This topic is not going to be directly needed in any of your homework for this chapter. It might be useful in a project later on, so let's have a quick look at it. Um, ordering, putting things in an order. There is a function called sort that works quite light nicely on regular atomic vectors. Let's let uh, the name vec be bound to 53741 and then ask for the sort of VEC. The result is the elements of VEC sorted from lowest to highest. If you want it the other way around, just take the parameter decreasing for the sort function and set it to true. Now sorting a data frame is not gonna be that easy because there's all kinds of different variables in the data frame. Would we want to sort by the fastest variable or by the sex variable, like alphabetical order or something like that, or by the GPA variable or any of the other variables? How would you want to sort? So if you're going to do that kind of thing, you really need another function called order. And you can read about that in the textbook. It helps to sort data frame, the, the rows of a data frame into an order specified by a particular sorting that you have in mind for, um, you know, for one of the variables. Here's the last and very important topic for data frames in this chapter. How do you make new variables for the data frame out of old ones? So for example, in Math 111 survey, height is reported in inches. But what if you would like to have another variable in the data frame that gives the height of the people in feet? Here's what you might do. You might take M111 survey dollar sign height, grabbing the vector of heights, divide it by 12. And every height will get divided by 12 and it will become a height in feet. And then you can bind the name height in feet to the result of that. And then 
you could take that vector and you could say, you know what? M111 survey dollar sign. And then you make up a name, some new name that's not already a name in your data frame. How about height underscore feet? That new column shall be this vector of numbers that we just made. Let's see how that would work out in our studio. So here on line 21, I'm just going to run that one line, control enter, and height in feet gets into my global environment. And now I'm going to stick a new column called height feet into M111 survey by running line 22. And something very interesting happened in the global environment. Please take a look over here in the global environment. All of a sudden, something named M111 survey gets into the global environment. Apparently, it's a data frame. It's 71 observations of 13 variables. Let's check the structure. It's all the same variables that we had for M111 survey, but that new column is there as well. So this data frame, this thing in your global environment, is not the M111 survey that lives in the BCSCR package. It's your own personal copy here in your global environment. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. We don't want you to have the capability to change M111 survey back in the package because other people are going to need to use it too. Taking a look at M111 survey, your copy, you can see that final column here in the view. Now, another example of transformation. People told us where they preferred to sit. The answers were, rec were recorded as one, one front, two back, two middle, three back. But what if you were just interested in studying whether or not a person prefers to sit in the back? Could you introduce a new variable that says that? Well, how about this? Starting with M111 survey dollar sign seat, check to see whether it's equal equal to three back. So that's a logical vector of trues and falses. And if it is, true, then write back. If it's not true, then write other. That's what this if-else function is doing. And so C2 is going to be a bunch of backs and others. And then you can take the C2 and you can assign it into a new column of M111 survey, which you can call anything you like. I'm just going to call it C2. Let's see how this looks in our studio. Line 24 creates seat 2. Line 25 adds in a new column to, D, to M111 survey. Notice now M111 survey has 14 variables. The last one is this character vector of others and backs. What if you just wanted to make the names a little bit better looking? One front, two middle, three back just seems a bit artificial. One way to do it is there's a map values function that's inside the plier package that's installed on your server. So you can get at the map values function without having to library the whole plier by using the double colons. So what we're doing is calling map values here. The first argument needs to be the vector whose values you want to recode. So how about M111 survey dollar sign seat? And we want to go from the values, one front, two, middle, three, back, to the values, 
front, middle, back. So C3 is the result of that function call. And it turns out to be a factor. Its three levels are going to be front, middle, and back. And notice here when you ask for the structure, it tries to give you the first few values. Note it comes out as numbers. That's just how factors are. Factors are recorded in R as numbers. The one stands for front. The two stands for middle. The three stands for a back. R stores factors that way to save space. So you could add that as a row to your data frame just uh, in the usual assignment way. Let's see how that works in our studio. So here's our map values call creating C3. We'll factor with three levels here in our global environment. And uh, let's go ahead and add that into uh, M111 survey. So M111 survey dollar sign seat three shall be seat three. Is that the function call? Let me check. Yeah. So now poor old M111 survey has 15 variables in it. The last one being seat three with the nice value names. Sometimes you got a numerical variable and you'd like to uh, break it up to make a categorical variable out of it. For example, we have people's heights. What if we wanted to classify people as like short, medium height, or tall? There's an R function called cut. What you do is you first give it the vector of numerical variables you want to cut up. And then your second uh, parameter is called breaks. And you give left and right hand endpoints for where the cuts are going to occur. Now, I'm going to cut into short, medium, and tall. That is three uh, groups. I actually will need one more than that as my number of boundaries. So this vector here is a numerical vector of length four. The nth is, just stands for infinity in R. The minus m comma 65 says that my first group is everybody who's taller than minus infinity and up to 65 inches. The next group is ever going to be everybody between 65 and 70 inches. And the final group is everybody who's 70 to infinity inches. So the m keeps me from worrying like what is the smallest height that was recorded or what was the largest height that is recorded. The labels tells me the names for my three groups. Now, the, there's another parameter called right. And if you set right to false, it means that if somebody's on a borderline, like 65, that they're going to get classed as the medium, not the short. And so that means that the right-hand endpoint does not get into the group of which it is the right hand. On the other hand, if right is true, then the right-hand endpoint will get into the group of which it is the right hand. Let's check that out in our studio. Height class turns into this factor with three levels, short, medium, and tall. And you could add that in to your data frame if you wished. One last small but very important uh, topic is how would you get rid of a variable in a data frame? Like say I don't want that C3 to be in the data frame anymore. You can do an assignment. You can say that M111 survey dollar sign C3 shall be null. Let's give that a try. So right now, M111 survey has got a C3. 
But watch what happens when I run line 38 here. Kapomp. No more C3. That's it for the Chapter 7 slides. See you again.